Hey everybody, what's going on? Rob Sestrino back for another episode of Buddy Games or Recap here on the Hit or Quit podcast covering reality TV's weirdest shows on television and back with us, a woman who is ready to funnel another episode of Buddy Games. It's Jenny Autumn. Jenny, how are you? I'm so wonderful, Rob. Mm -hmm. Uh a lady but not a lunch lady i'm sorry yeah. was that a was that the bugle sounding yes i heard i heard we had a birthday in the house today yes oh yes happy birthday rob thank you thank you jenny and it's just like i always dreamed of spending <laughs> uh, my birthday uh covering buddy games yes well i am honored to be your first podcast of the of your birthday yes um and I believe we have a birthday curveball here. A curveball? Am I being yes. sabotaged? You are not, actually. Um, I, I believe oh, I, I am being sabotaged uh, in your honor. Yes. Um, we are... Okay, so <laughs> let me explain what, what we have got going on here. Yeah. For the, the audio-only people. Okay. This here is a shot of hot sauce. Yes. Uh, I believe I've been sabotaged in your honor. <laughs> yes. um, so before I do the rest of this podcast, I, I believe I actually have to do. You don't a have shot to do this. I, I, I do. Um, <laughs> listen, that's curveball rule. Uh, and I OK, let me explain the the peanut butter cup. Yeah, is that a peanut a, butter cup with a candle? It is in a it? thin. It's a thin <laughs> peanut butter cup. Um with a with a birthday candle in it i did originally try to put the birthday candle into the shot of hot sauce but it was too short and it was sinking in mm -hmm. to the hot sauce um so i decided i still wanted to do the birthday candle um and so i put it into the peanut butter cup i, I do believe you like peanut butter cups i do yes yeah. very much so um but you don't have to do this jenny i want to, <laughs> to do <laughs> it i want You're not gonna to do spin it, in the chair 40 times and will this. not spin <laughs> and grin um but i will do this hot shot sauce to start the podcast off are you ready i'm ready okay should i what should i do with this with the I, should I, I blow it know. out can we sing to you yeah make a wish okay well i'll make a wish for, wish for a renewal out. for buddy games yeah. yes okay that's uh, yeah even, even though I don't think you're supposed to say what your wish was. Okay. okay. I said We're gonna, it. I said it. Yeah. This is you Rob's didn't. wish. And I'm going to blow out this candle. And then I'm going to proceed with the shot. All right. And then okay. we can get this podcast. On okay. The all okay, right. So, oh God, it's melting onto the peanut butter cup. I'm still going to eat this. Also, okay. this candle um, was previously in hot sauce. So now this peanut butter <laughs> cup is probably also going to taste like hot sauce. And probably everything else I consume today will taste like hot sauce. All right. So we're ready. Three. Yeah. Two, one. Okay. Wow. Woo. <laughs> Happy birthday, Rob. I do it because I love you and you're my wow. buddy. Thank you. Thank you, work. Jenny. Well, that is a real testament. I hope that, um, you know, I, I, your birthday just passed. I didn't drink or eat any gross stuff. Yeah, but there, there, there was no theme. Was you know so what I mean? It's true. I, I am committed to a theme and... Mm -hmm. Um, I just wanted to show that I'm as committed to our partnership as any of the buddy gamers would be. I would do the hot shot sauce if we were on a team. Yeah. And that was the punishment. I'd take one for the team for you. Yeah. Um, but you're a big Bloody Mary person, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Bloody Mary or Bloody Caesar up in, up in yeah. uh, Canada. Um, yeah. I do like the spice. I do like the spice. Mm -hmm. Um. But I feel like maybe doing like hot sauce and then spinning around um, and then like a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> like it could yeah. be a recipe for disaster. Yeah, Josh I don't chose that... violence this week. He did. Uh, he lunch did. He lady's loves revenge. The lunch lady had a lot of revenge to uh, take out. Some vengeance. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I could spell it. Uh, to take out on everybody here yes. in the buddy games as a uh, sad episode as a that we've lost. The Derby squad. Rob, I was spoiled on this last night. Yes. Sorry, I'm eating my peanut butter cup now. That's because fine. Because I wanted to follow that up. It was like the nice Just dessert. Don't, to don't the hurl. Cup. Yeah. I'll be fine. Um, so I I rarely catch buddy games live. Lots, lots going on on Thursday night. 
I know that you are also like having to podcast mm -hmm. Big Brother right after. Anyway, long story short, I usually record my buddy games and watch it later. And I was on Twitter and one Zach Wurtenberger <laughs> uh, managed the most unexpected way to be spoiled on the result of buddy games. Uh, this is the first time I've ever been spoiled before watching the episode with a very hilarious tweet. I'm sure if like maybe you've seen it <laughs> in his tribute tweet to his brother being evicted on Big Brother 25 last night. Sorry if, if you're not caught up on Big yeah. Brother. I don't know what you're doing here. Um mm -hmm. He spoils the exit of the Derby squad in the same tweet. <laughs> yeah. He says, uh, losing them tonight hurts. Uh, it, it, a picture of Corey and also the Derby squad. But yeah. the impact they had on their season will never be forgotten. They played with passion, respect, and beyond anything, a true love of the game. I am so effing proud of Corey and the Derby girls. When this appeared on my timeline, I was like, no! <laughs> mm -hmm. Because I... I have had time to grieve Corey's departure. You know, I knew he was gone like several days ago. Mm -hmm. I was not prepared for, they just lost Rachel, Rob. I didn't realize mm -hmm. that we were going to, th the very next revolving door, they were going to go. And I, this was my favorite team. Mm -hmm. And I have grown very fond of the buddy games. And yeah, this is a, this is a big loss for. It's I like think, they're the our show. buddies at this point. Yeah, they are. I feel like they're my friends. Um, and so I got spoiled in in a very hilarious way. Like I was like, this is very funny. This is a, listen. Zach Wurtenberger is is one of the funniest people on Twitter. Period. Mm. Um, so sad, sad Twitter. night. Yes. Sad night. We lost Corey and we lost the Derby squad. I am very upset. But yeah. They they went out they went out uh, with pride not team pride team pride yeah. is there but. and ultimately uh, they went out as uh, they came into the game uh, buck naked yeah that was incredible their exit was perfect that was like, good that was really stripping great, down great as they're walking away and yeah. like everyone was. Yeah, it was okay. incredible. So we've got a full recap here of episode six of Buddy Games. And then we do have something special here in uh, this episode yeah. that uh, yesterday, before we talked about this episode, uh, Jenny and I had the chance to uh, do our first Buddy Games interview. We actually got to catch up with one of the pageant queens, Devani Shea. And uh, Devani uh, told us all about her experience here in the Buddy Games house. And uh, we had a, a very interesting conversation with Devi. Yeah. So I, I, it was very fun to talk to Devi, and uh, you know, I'm excited for everyone to hear what she has to say too. Um, it was nice yeah. to like get some of the insider stuff, especially you know from such a big uh, personality and presence from the uh, first few episodes of the show. So, okay. So we've got our episode fun. six recap, and then we'll uh, then take a break and then we'll throw it to our uh interview with debbie but all right so lunch ladies revenge uh here yeah. is uh what we're gonna talk about and you know uh really at the center of everything right now uh we team pride and uh chicago's finest they are really running things as we head towards the end game of buddy games yes buddy they Endgames. are um and you know they're the the last two teams with th that are fully intact and th basically we get uh andrew kind of telling chicago that they're not gonna go against them and it, the plan is basically let's just get us both down to the end fully intact 4v4 and that's when they'll they'll battle so do you that think seems that that's to be how it will go jenny do you think that will there be any sort of like rug pulled out from anybody um, you know what? I kind of feel like if they truly wanted to, maybe they would have kind of gone for them by now. I wonder though, because Pride, you know, because they're allied with uh Chicago, um, they, and they did want to weaken another team, we obviously saw them go after the Derby squad. I don't know if they just felt more threatened by the Derby squad or if it was just like, well, we're not as we're not working as closely with them. So that's the team we're going to weaken. But like 
after this episode, Chicago's Finest has now gone to Loser's Last Stand, I think, four times. Mm-hmm. Almost every episode, they are in Loser's Last Stand, and they always come out of it. They have not <laughs> lost a single person. I have to think, whereas Team Pride has not been tested yes. in Loser's Last Stand yet. So I have to think that maybe at some point, Pride should be thinking, do we really want to get down to 4v4 against uh, Chicago here? Because maybe they can't beat them. Yeah. Like Maybe it's just worked out by happenstance that they haven't had to really face off against them. Um, and but maybe the they about, should take a strike. Yeah, Buddy Games is like, other than the curveball, there's really not any way to like, target any other teams right. where yes. you know it's mostly that there's these competitions and uh even though somehow you know it's it's like a double-edged sword that chicago's finest that they have won every loser's last stand but they've also been in every loser's right. last stand. so yeah. which is it well the the other thing is that you know the losers last stand sometimes is just like the two lowest like to, even in tonight's episode uh just the two lowest so it's like being second last maybe um and sometimes also exemplified in this episode just being in the middle can keep you mm-hmm. out of losers last stand and that's how team pride has avoided it all the time mind you they have won quite a few so it's hard to say because some of these challenges, like they're so arbitrary. Like some of them are physical. Some of them are, can you stomach food? Like some of them are balance. I don't know. I just feel like it's such a strange like skill set that you can't really determine that. I, Mm -hmm. I think it's hard to say whether one team is like really stronger than the other, especially if they have the same amount of, of uh, people, but the, the other thing that doesn't get explained here, and because we don't get like a confessional from Andrew saying like confirming that this is his plan, because we know that they're also working with Philly forever, right? Like that's what the plan was. Pride is working with Chicago's finest and Philly forever. Um, and so if he if he's telling Chicago's finest, it's us, let's like four v four, let's do it at the end. Where does that leave Philly forever? Are they true? Are they planning to just like take them out when they have to? Like, obviously, Team OK is going to be the next target here. They're going to use the group of them together. But like, so do you think we'll get down to three? Do you think that maybe uh, Pride, if they have the opportunity to try and get out someone from Chicago to weaken them a little bit, that's better than just like picking off. Philly forever because they're maybe not a stronger team. Jenny, I, don't I, know. Have, I have no idea. <laughs> these are I'm these are good sure. questions. That's why there's only Andrew two more rounds me. of buddy games. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and ultimately, there's Andrew not that much maximum. room for yeah. it's not like that there's like nine tribal councils in between now and the like yeah. this, you could really craft the end game. Yeah. And maybe like there needs to be more opportunities to target. Like maybe the curveball is not enough, you know? Mm hmm. Um, because. I mean, still, again, Curveball has sent someone to Loser's Last Stand every single time. It does seem to work. Yeah. Um, But may, I don't know. Maybe there just needs to be another function within the game uh, to, okay. to weaken another team. I don't know. All right. Well, that's up to Josh and the yeah. producers to for work season out for season two, two that we've we wished, wished for. for. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> So uh, on the Amazing Race this week, the teams also got to cast wishes for what they want to have happen. So I think that that's only fitting that we can wish the, for buddy games to get yes. renewed. And All right. I feel like the episode was almost like themed for you, Rob, because yes. they had balloons. Birthday. Yes, they did. They did. This okay. was anti-Jenny, though. Yes, because you hate balloons. I hate balloons. I would yeah. probably just like opt. I would be like, we're going home. If I was on the Derby squad, I'd be like, this is my snake, you know? Mm-hmm. This is me, with Melissa, with the snakes. Um, I The sound of balloons touching anything and the popping is literally a sensory nightmare for me. I don't want to wow. touch them. I don't want to smell them. I don't want to be in the presence of anyone touching and, like, making noise with them. I think that this – I would quit. And we love wow. quitters on CBS shows. It's, yes. a, it's all the this rage. Is, this is <laughs> Everyone the loves to it. Do it. <laughs> this is the week to do it. Oh I want to be the first quitter of buddy games. That's my destiny. 
Oh my god. Uh yeah, the quitters like and I get like like private messages from survivors like can you believe this crap? <laughs> I I can't imagine caring that much, but <laughs> I like, listen, everyone's different. I'm just like I know. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, you have to pretend <laughs> to really care. Just, yeah. like, I'm really mad about this. Like could not be bothered. My life is fine. I will move on. <laughs> All right. So um, let's talk about the uh, burst my bubble challenge. Um, yeah. Josh came out and uh, said he had serious calf envy uh, out of somebody. <laughs> but what was it? Was it Huddy? Huddy. Yes. So they're talking about <laughs> who's going to sit in the chair because one one team member ends up sitting in the chair. And I guess they, they say, yo, is going to be the one who sits in the chair. And then he's like talking about like the physique of Huddy and yeah. Palmer. I'm Don't objectify Palmer, like, Huddy, Josh. Yeah. And so then he like Josh comes over and he's like showing off Huddy's calves and being like, check out the calves here. Do you think because you think uh, they're real? You think that they're implants? Well, it, this has to be front of mind because one of Josh's buddies is uh, it, Johnny uh, Drama. Kevin, yeah, Johnny Drama from Entourage who had the the calf and envy. Yeah, uh, this is like a storyline. So I I feel like there's like some sort of synergy there. Yeah, um, are they like, real life buddies or are they? Uh, I'm just uh, assuming. What Kevin Dillon is that his name? Yeah, Kevin Dillon. Like if they did a movie together, um, and the movie is this was kind Huddy of in movie? Viking Quest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> victory <laughs> that's what they should do when they win <laughs> yeah we need All more right. of that <laughs> but yes anyway they showed off huddy's like muscular but like toned it's not like it was like a big calf it's like more so just like the definition of yeah. huddy's calves so mm -hmm. good job to huddy good job <laughs> there and so the the strategy here is basically if you didn't watch the episode that one person is going to sit in a lawn chair and then uh other partner is going to come in and then have to break a balloon using only uh their two bodies to yes. break the balloon and that's uh how this is going to go and we see some teams like getting like very rough uh team uh Chicago's finest like I uh, felt like was it was it Sarge was basically like trying to like uh, sack the chair? Yeah. So Ray was the one sitting, and Sarge I guess played football. Mm -hmm. Um, and so like Sarge just he like, still charges. plays football. I think he plays in yeah. like some like police league. Right. Yes. Um, and so he just like tackles Ray like brute force being used to pop these balloons. Mm -hmm. Did some he break people... the chair also? I believe the chair that got broken was actually from Team OK because um, at the end of uh, the challenge, Josh told Palmer, or was it Huddy? I think Huddy was the one that broke the chair and he owes $16 because these, <laughs> and I thought that's highballing what those chairs were worth. Those yeah. $5 at the dollar store. So where'd they film this? Like Columbia or something? They yeah. didn't get paid yeah. $16 think, for that chair. There, there's no way these were the cheapest looking chairs like this show is so low budget in the most delightful way mm -hmm. um the, i i really think that josh was trying to get a cut there by saying yeah. that this chair was 16 dollars. yeah no prop on buddy games ever cost more than three dollars no mm -hmm. absolutely i don't know not. what the budget was for buddy games it like the the budget got blown I into paying mm -hmm. for whatever the lodge, yeah. the Airbnb uh, lodge. In yeah, I think maybe like ninety percent went to Josh Dumel, and then the yeah. rest is like, all right, uh, this challenge is gonna be uh, pop tarts and hula hoops. Yeah, like. And they're not even brand name marshmallows that they're going to use. Like, it's going to be off-brand orange soda. Like, you're not getting the best of the best of anything here. Um, so, like, the budget for all of the supplies is is slim, if if anything. <laughs> These might have just been, like, yeah. from Josh's supply, from okay. his own buddy game. All right. Reuse. So, ultimately, uh, Team OK is going to win the curveball and have to decide what to do. A anything else from the uh, Burst Your Bubble Challenge, Jenny? Um, yeah, there was, I don't know. It was just like, it, it was just funny to watch uh, everyone like tackling each other. Sha Shaggy says, 
I like I'm gonna hump you. Uh, we've done this before or something. She said something mm-hmm. like that. Like it's mm-hmm. been there, done that. Um, so you know, you got the fun montage. Like, yeah, we everyone. have a, we have three kids each, so we're used yeah. to we're used we've to done this. a lot of humping, like it's like no lies detected. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um yeah, the broken chair, uh it, it it was it was good. I love that the strategy of Erica um from Philly Forever is the one who sits because um she she was worried about Anthony and and Freddie's uh yeah makes uh, sense balls. yeah <laughs> with no cup of... for the guys yeah. here in this challenge no need for a cup she's she's a little bit more protected if you're having to sit because they made it look like you're supposed to break the balloons by sitting on them like mm-hmm. making a sandwich uh motion Not I guess more yeah but everyone the, there was emergent strategy here like we were tackling you know so mm-hmm. and yeah. it, this is kind of i felt like it was kind of unfair because it's like obviously the most physical people with the biggest bodies when they smash together more likely to to pop a balloon hmm so i, I, I don't know like, maybe like people with like skinny bony bodies would be more likely to like pop the balloon like uh if, if, it's so more, trying more, to, like, if you have more cushion maybe it's like less likely to oh pop. it's like yeah let more cushion for the push so like they should be trying to like take these out on like melissa's knees or something like that like <laughs> someone with like a smaller frame that might be like a little bit like a like a bonier knee <laughs> <laughs> are you okay rob <laughs> have i done too much for the morning I yeah today? <laughs> i wasn't expecting to uh get into like uh who has b- the boniest knees uh we got the meaty <laughs> and calves the and the bony knees yeah but yeah listen uh, so i i did feel like then this was like kind of relatable then we got to like nighttime where everybody is like the buddy games competitors that this is a show and most of the cast is it fair to say is this like a a, a roast to say like you know the majority of the cast is like middle aged right yeah and well, i've this- never understood what counts as middle aged because yeah. i feel like like what what we live longer on average mm-hmm. than we used to right so like what's middle age but yeah, i would say like, I like everyone that- here is like like at least in their 40s at least yeah, I, I would probably... i bet there's probably some people that are in their uh, mid 30s if i had to guess really? um i think that yeah, like maybe. uh i mean take a look at like some of the like um you know chicago's uh finest like i, I don't know like i don't think everybody here yeah. is over uh is over 40 i was I, assuming everyone's 40 over 40 but yeah like i don't know i don't know what the criteria is to be cast on buddy games yeah i I think that probably like uh like we have like mid 30s to mid 40s maybe some late 40s you're uh, saying i've got a chance rob yeah i'm saying you got a chance um and so (laughs) but every like (laughs) the game's been going on for like two weeks now uh and there's a lot of people like licking their wounds and kicking out of bed like i'm so freaking sore i can't move uh but still they're gonna party relatable yeah Mm -hmm. which i thought was an interesting and again i don't know the timeline and i i wish that we had asked debbie this yesterday the timeline of like the um because it seems that the curveball and then the actual buddy game happens on different days and perhaps even loser last stand is its own day so it's like did they end up partying the so the night after the curveball with the balloons but bef- like the night before they were going to have to participate in a so, buddy game because I think that that plays a part. Yeah, I don't think that there's any sort of like downtime here on the buddy games. Like I, I would think that oh. it's sort of like, yeah, like like you, they're renting this place. Like I think when, when you shoot these shows, like it's not like Big Brother where it's like, yeah. hey, stretch this out for as long as possible. Um, that I'm sure that they were like, okay, we're going to shoot all the buddy games in like 13 days or whatever. So yeah. I think every episode is probably two days. Yeah, that that sounds right. But I just thought that this was like an intro. Listen, I've been wanting them to party. Yeah, I've been wanting them to have a good time. I wish that we saw a little bit more of it. But I just thought it was an interesting sh- choice to seem like 
everyone was like deciding after already being beat up from the curveball. They're like, let's get drunk. We have not played enough flip cup and beer pong. Let's do more of that with normal size cups. Um, when we probably have a buddy game coming up the next day. Like, yeah. let's let's throw a hangover on top of it. You're this. right. And don't Jenny, tell me I, that I didn't think about this. Yeah. So yeah. And we heard from the Derby squad that they got they were feeling like physically bad banged up and then they got banged up from the alcohol that was consumed exactly. and then to go into a challenge that was like very much like a challenge that you need an iron stomach for i i feel like that, you're spin right and not grin like spin it was and not terrible. grin and, and and consume mass quantities and yeah. ultimately yeah th that probably did play a factor you know if maybe in buddy games if we want these teams to be like partying more and have like more debauchery, like maybe we should be building in like another day of like, all right, tonight is a planned party. Blow off some steam. Everybody yeah. get crazy. There's nobody like, game make tomorrow. Make them party the way that like, like with the challenge where they specifically go on the little like trips to the bar. Yeah. Um, I want that to be scheduled into the timeline. Right. I'm shocked that there wasn't more vomiting given the fact because like yeah. just sometimes if I'm too hungover, just the act of standing up and walking sure. might induce a vomit. Uh, and we're spinning 40 times on a tire swing. <laughs> eating yeah, I mean, why not? Like we do like so much like fake flip cup, like make that be the curveball. Like do it for real. Yeah. Kill exactly. two birds with one stone. It's party night. And then also it's the curveball. Yes. And then we can see who who can perform when they're partying and mm -hmm. who like because I'll tell you one thing, Rob, you've never seen me bowl. Yeah. But if you ever if we ever get the opportunity, Rob, and we can go bowling and maybe consume a few um, libations. Yeah. Uh, I get better as the night goes on. Be I am. Akiva? Uh, maybe. Uh, mm. especially if he gets worse as the evening, uh, you know, he gets sleepy. Yeah. Um, I am like the more drinks I have, the better bowler I become. Uh, so I think that there is some, some people with certain skill sets, they get better at, at activities, um, the more they consume. So I, I think it'd just be interesting if they had a, a competition where they're doing true flip cup and, mm -hmm. That's how you're gonna get the curveball. Because I'm gonna say, like, who's the true partier here? Who can hang? <laughs> well, we'll but find maybe out. Maybe they shouldn't be. I don't know. Encouraging. Yeah, that I don't know if they can like have. TV. Maybe if it's only on <laughs> Paramount Plus, or like, yeah. uh, maybe put that scene the uh, on the. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about Lunch Lady's Revenge. Uh, yeah. In this competition, for those of you who were just listening to the podcast, didn't watch the show, uh, in Lunch Lady's Revenge, uh, the teams will consume five s'mores um and this is like a s'mores would you say that uh what what is this called deconstructed like, s'mores deconstructed that's the right because word. yes it was just the it was just the makings of the s'mores um i guess enough for five s'mores um what does this have to do with the lunch lady rob what is s'mores a cafeteria no thing? no like, i don't know with the lunch i didn't lady. understand yeah i, I thought it was like all right you're gonna eat some sloppy joes yes and yeah. that would have been disgusting mm -hmm. that would have been better we should yeah josh get us on the production team we, all right we'll so the lunch the lady challenges. uh her revenge is okay eat five s'mores yeah okay deconstructed that yeah. you could put them together, you can put as them we'll together. see. Like, like if you yeah. love s'mores, like Andrew does, yeah. and then you will spin in the chair forty times, yeah. then the uh, cross swing. a balance beam. Yeah. Okay, and then <laughs> you have to funnel five orange sodas, and that's not yes. even a good combination of bong. s'mores and orange soda. Well, some people like the combination of uh, chocolate and orange because they have you. Have you ever had a, one of those chocolate oranges? I have not. They're disgusting, in my opinion. But yeah, I don't like to mix fruit and chocolate. Um, I do apparently like to mix hot sauce and chocolate, though. Yes. Uh, but yeah, that anything carbonated and sweet mm -hmm. through a beer bong. I'm pretty sure I've done probably like a Smirnoff ice. Uh, through you got ice a, a beer uh, through a beer bong though I think mm -hmm. 
or maybe yeah. like a Woody's grapefruit. Do you guys have that in the States? No. <laughs> it's like a cooler and it's like grapefruit, but it's pure sugar. I feel like that's what this is, except for no alcohol. Yeah. Um, not the not my ideal way to drink that much soda pop, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Through a beer and, bong. and then after that, was that was there another piece to this also that after you um, drank? I the, think they just was... have to finish the beer. Yeah. The soda. Did anybody That's projectile it. vomit? No projectile, but I do believe um I know I'm pretty sure Melissa vomited. Mm -hmm. Um I that's why I'm saying I thought more people would puke because it's like if you are hungover or even just a little bit salty from the night before, mm -hmm. then you're going to eat all this food. Then you're going to get spun. And then to finish it off, you're going to drink set. What, how was it? How many? Seven, six. Mm -hmm. how, how many sodas? I can't remember. Five, um, think, multiple yeah. sodas through a beer bong after all of that. Like I just. Yeah. There should have been more vomiting. And maybe mm -hmm. there would have been more vomiting if it was sloppy joes and not s'mores. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. That would have so, been so gross. Yeah. The teams uh, are, are going through this. And we have the curveball. And so Team OK, they have to decide who they're going to curveball. And, and yeah. uh, there was going to be some concern that maybe, uh, you know, Team Pride uh, was going to get it. But they could decide to uh, then hit the Chicago's finest. Yeah. And... I don't actually hate this like choice from OK because they basically identified that they think that Chicago is like the strongest team overall against them. Mind you, they do just end up in the um, the losers last stand every every episode, but they're winning every single time. Is there something to like they're getting the most practice? Like, do you get better at buddy games the more mm -hmm. games you do? Yeah, I would say probably, but also they so um, can't stay out of the uh, loser's last stand. Yeah, but maybe that's like a great strategy is just be like middling, like, you know, just like yeah, get opportunities the under the radar. Like eliminate other people, get good at like all of the challenges, figure out like what's yeah. going on in Josh's head and like what kind of things might be coming down the pipe. I mean, Andrew's original foray into reality TV, The Amazing Race is not unlike that where, you know, a lot of mm -hmm. times it's better, you know, sort of just like be middle, middle of the pack, pack, middle of the pack. The yeah. only final leg that you have to win is the last one. Yeah. Just don't and, be last. This is, this is what I'm saying though, which is why like, I don't know if, does team pride have it in them have they been challenged enough you know what mm. i mean like kind of it seemed a little bit like a cakewalk for them yeah um whereas like chicago's finest like they're they're doing stuff every single they're they're like keeping themselves in the rhythm of competing and maybe that makes them better suited to like win the whole thing i don't know they're also police officers they're clearly very physically fit very physically so anyway fit. okay yeah. decides we're gonna we're gonna punish the um the police officers and they the, have to the do a line. shot of hot sauce. It seems like more like and, a glass of hot sauce. Um, yeah, I know. For, I feel like maybe I ripped you off, Rob. No, I I'm not. I do not feel glass. ripped off. I do not feel ripped okay. off. Okay. So the teams <laughs> were going through it. Um, I, I noticed some emergent strategy. You know, we talked about uh, Andrew. He loves s'mores. He had two last night. He's a uh, really living his best life eating the yeah. s'mores. He gets off the tire swing and then he starts spinning seemingly counterclockwise um the opposite direction everybody's like what is he doing why is he spinning again but was this the emergent strategy, strategy. that we talked about yeah. with marianne back in survivor 42 right. where if you like spin uh, in one yeah. direction can you unspin to get back to normal i think that's what he was doing and i don't know whether we can say whether it worked they mm -hmm. they finished in the middle of the pack, which I guess mm -hmm. is what we're saying is the the right strategy here. Um, and let I guess, us know if that worked. Yeah. yeah, like I think that the idea of it would because it's like you're just trying to recalibrate. Um, but I don't know if I would want to spin more. I buy in. Yeah, I would just want to get like horizontal as soon as possible i would just be like whatever is going to make this end as quickly as possible so i'd probably just be stupid and just like go straight forward and probably yeah. fall. Now, jenny a big part of this was you needed 
the perfect pour. Uh, it's like, uh, you know, the beer tap of, you know, yeah. you don't want to get too much, uh, too Aww. much uh, of us uh, with the orange soda head. Uh, yeah. You really want to like the perfect pour because these bubbles, I think, could probably clog up the funnel. Yes. It'll, As any it'll experienced slow funneler down. could tell you. Yes, exactly. Do, you, do people still do beer bongs? How would I know? Are the Gen Z, like, I, I feel like, I, <laughs> I, I feel like it. I saw that Gen Z doesn't really, like, drink. Whereas, like, I, Gen, think, I feel like yeah. Gen Xers and Millennials, because it's like, we, uh, life is hard. And and mm -hmm. they're like, hey, you're you're never going to own a house in your lifetime. So you might as well um, just yeah. have a good time while you're on this rock. Um, whereas I feel like the Gen Z are not, like, as much of, of the partiers. So I don't know if, like, college is still, like, rocking the beer bongs or if that was, like, a time in Do history. Do you think we have any Gen Z buddy games podcast listeners? Please let I us know. Like I, must, I don't want right? to, like, uh, make too much supposition as to No, but I just want to know doing. if beer bongs are still, I like, will say, in college culture. So in on News AF, I know, like, in, like, the last couple of years – that there were stories about um, like anal funneling beer um, because that was like a new way to drink. Yeah. Well, I feel like that's, the, you know, you have like all like the TikTok challenges and like, mm -hmm. but I, I feel like that's all just like dangerous shock value ways of like mm -hmm. doing Because you'll get wasted. If you do, if you do a funnel to your butt, like yeah. you will. It's absorbing. Get hammered. Yeah. Yeah, the butt chug is a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and frankly, I would like to see that incorporated into future buddy into games. Buddy games season two. Like, don't get, tell, tell me Josh Dumel and his friends aren't doing that. He's 100% yeah. has butt chugged. Probably 100%. it's in one of the buddy games movies if we go it, back yeah. and watch. Yeah, but like right after they have the meaner colada. Yeah, they go straight from the meaner colada to the butt chug. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know if we can. I don't know if we can. Yeah, the, the mean, <laughs> the meaner colonic. I think is what they call colonic. that. <laughs> All right, Jenny. <laughs> uh, they, so yeah, so they're having some problems. Uh, summer is like just like chugging away at these. Sodas. Summer loves orange soda. But this is like nothing, I guess. So yeah, I can barely have like three si full sugar pop. For me now mm -hmm. is like disgusting. Um, I can't imagine being able to drink one orange soda as mm -hmm. opposed, like, let alone that many of them, and then through. Although maybe when you're doing it through the beer bong, it's just kind of like it's yeah. going through you so quickly, you're not really I, like getting. Yeah, full I think sugar. this is how Akiva used to take the Coke Zero. I think he would funnel it. <laughs> yeah, just straight to the dome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Um, there was one point where, uh, like some of the Derby squad, uh, were, were struggling. Uh, somebody yelled out, you can't get in the hot tub if you have diarrhea. Yeah. So th I think they, they were saying this to Chicago when they were doing the hot sauce Okay. because they're basically saying like, if you get spicy diarrhea, you're not allowed in the hot tub. So like, get it together. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I do appreciate Queens. that they at least have yeah. rules for the hot tub. No yeah. diarrhea in the hot tub. No diarrhea in the hot tub. Um, but ultimately, we're going to see here where uh, it's going to be the Derby squad uh, taking on Chicago's finest in the mm -hmm. loser's last stand once again. Yeah. But and there, can we... Yes. Oh, I was just going to say, the, the, the side plot of um, Yo had upset the Chicago's finest by, like, I guess, trash talking their pores yeah. from the sidelines. Yo was like, hey, that pour is so, is garbage. And you know what? This is, pro taps into the ethos of buddy games <laughs> of, like, above all else, you play hard. It's also about sportsmanship. And right. But do you, you not think that the buddies are sometimes doing a little trash talk? Isn't that just like, like, yeah, I do think the trash talk culture? is a part of buddy games. I feel like but, it must, right? But in good know. jest. Uh, like, I, I, I feel like that, um, you know, Sarge and, and Ray, they didn't like that. They didn't they, like hey, it. I think. Don't talk about how we pour soda, okay? Yeah, here's the thing. Uh, I feel terrible because they, they clearly made Yo feel absolutely horrible and he was like almost in tears apologizing mm -hmm. which listen 
Uh, I don't, if, if, if two cops come to me and tell me I did something wrong, I'd probably cry. Um, it's not it, like, it's not a good feeling to, to be told by the police officers that you did a bad. Um, mm-hmm. but if we're being real here, um, and listen, I'm, I'm a little baby. I'm a sensitive little, little baby. Uh, I just don't think that what he said was that mean. They're like, he, he made it personal. He was he first of all he was not you yelling suck at pouring, them. Yeah, pour. like, imagine imagine that is like the thing like they said maybe if like your job is like I'm a bartender and like this is my life's work I I have mastered the perfect pour and someone criticizes like your like your thing maybe that hurts maybe that digs a little but like mm-hmm. <laughs> I just feel like this is this is they're trying to bring them back to like the core of like you're in college with your buddies like you're and like you know that when yo and the okay guys were in college they were all ripping on each other being like look at that poor like this is yeah. <laughs> all he's doing is just broing down with his guys you know and i don't think he meant any ill will by this but mm. he learned very quickly that this was not how chicago's finest that's not how they was operate playing no <laughs> um so this was the big drama of the episode is yo yo was bad sportsmanship for criticizing the pores <laughs> and he's yeah he should have cheered for them like he would for derby that's right <laughs> so We'll all right, never see well, this again. <laughs> all right. So, Jenny, it's coming down to it. Uh, we're going to get Loser's Last Stand, Tug of War, and... Um, yank my know, chain. <laughs> yeah, yank my chain. Uh, back and forth here with the Derby Squad and Chicago's Finest. And, yeah, was there, like, some... Uh, Sexual tension. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this okay. was, like... like well, do you think that maybe because, like, Josh loves his, like, his cute little names for the... For the uh, competitions he's like yank my chain like we're gonna make this like a sexy uh tug of war um because it seemed like especially uh the derby squad they were horned up you know (laughs) they were like i i was finding out about who was sexy in the house that everyone felt and like i saw more of people than i had seen in previous episodes yeah this was incredible Uh, this is the kind of content i i'm looking for and yeah, did you uh, see Sarge in a oh. in, in a speedo? Uh, yeah, so, Sarge. So, look, Sarge is a babe. Okay, who cares? It started off when Shaggy challenges Ray and says Ray, Ray is the sexy, sexy Ray. Um, and then Shu ch- uh, challenges Sarge and says, "In my dreams, all day long, Sarge." And then like Sarge is a babe. And then Shaggy goes, "Have you seen Sh- Sarge in a speedo?" we have and then we get the like the like camcorder filter type uh footage of sarge i guess one of through one of these parties that we didn't get to see uh coming down the stairs in a speedo (laughs) and like a like a paper crown it looks like like a burger king crown yeah where was that episode (laughs) did they hit the bk lounge i don't know don't know where this crown came from (laughs) whopper 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 I'm so glad that those commercials are also in the States. They are the, mm-hmm. the earworm that never ends. Um, and he's like going down the stairs holding like a stuffed tiger or something. What's with all the stuffed like I don't know taxidermy you know. in the it, it was weird. It, it, release the director's cut, you cowards, of uh he's too hot for sp- buddy games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to see Sarge in the speedo with the crocs. Um, what was going on here? uh yeah so it seems to be some some real sexual tension between the the derby squad and the not to like burst anybody's balloon okay uh Uh, but is it possible like could this have been could team derby squad have been entering into some kind of like could this have been maybe a tactic of it's like hey we're gonna take on chicago's finest but like what if like uh we sort of like uh Objectify. Use our womanly wiles. <laughs> Use our womanly wiles of like, oh, it's you know, uh, I want uh, Sar, you know, Sarge is a babe, Sex- yeah. sexy, uh, sexy Ray. Sexy Ray. Yeah. Could, I mean, could that have thrown the guys off their game a little bit? Is that possible? I mean, 
Listen, I know everyone's kind of letting loose and having fun here, but I think we're all on the same page when we say say that it seems like Chicago's finest is like the most serious team. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? They're in like a very serious profession. They probably want to uphold a certain image on the show. Um, and so I think that, yeah, yeah maybe this like is hot like- cop Dan. Yeah, like make them blush a little bit, you know, Mm -hmm. like make them like, oh, I wasn't expecting to be called sexy. Like, oh, get in their head. If this is the strategy, I love it. Um, So Mm -hmm. that that could have been, but this might have also just been them being the Derby squad, just being the the fun gals they are, you know? Yeah, Uh, ultimately, uh, the Derby squad, this is going to be their last stand. Um, They were super fun. They were close. They were were super fun. I I, I love that. We haven't talked enough about uh, Melissa, who I thought was hilarious through the whole season. Honestly, they were so good. She cracked me up every time. Yeah. Yeah. They were they were really really fun and uh, great casting. They go out and they uh, basically like take their tops off and walk off. I mean, they were just so fun. I feel like that they were like a big part of the season. One hundred percent. That word like, was right. Yes. No. And I he was right, and it did it did break my heart a little bit to know I was like I I, I just got over the fear that they were all gonna walk with Rachel last week. And I didn't want to mm-hmm. lose them yet. And clearly Josh didn't want to lose them yet. He literally talked them into staying. And the next le- week we lose them. Um, but they seemed at peace with it. They had fun. They were laughing, uh, taking their tops off, going out the way they came. And I thought that this front to back, this was the biggest casting win of the teams, in my opinion. Yeah. And this is not to like shade any of the other people. I just felt like all of them had such such good personality yeah, they and were personality were really they were actually friends yeah. uh they just they tell. were they were like big you know uh they were great on the show they wanted to also like uh like play hard and so and they they also they wanted to party sports. like you know, yeah they were just they were doing uh, all I, of it i think that yeah i think that they got it the most right with uh derby squad here for i think they uh, understood they understood the assignment. Yes. Ultimately, abs- like I think they came and they said, let's be fun. Let's be competitive. If someone is playing us dirty, let's call it out. But let's not like, you know, be mean people. It was they were really, really good. And I I enjoyed them. And like mm-hmm. I said, I feel like I feel like I know them now. You know, I feel like they're yeah. my buddies. Um, so. Jenny, do you think that uh, Sarge and Ray will each get their own months in the Zaddy calendar? Or do you think they will share Ooh. a month? Um, that is a good, well, I mean, it just depends on how, how much, um, real estate Bryce has available in the calendar Mm. because, you know, he might not be able to give a whole, um, like month, like multiple months to buddy games because he might have like, there's so many shows, Rob, like there's Mm -hmm. a lot going on. And so I think that he's got to go daily. Yeah, yeah. At least like, weekly. Or, 52 or least Zaddies. Weekly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Zaddy. I mean, it's basically like a freak of the week on, on a freak calendar. Freak of the week. Oh, okay. We got to text Bryce. We got to talk. Uh, yeah. uh, if he texts me today, I'll uh, You could do say. a weekly, a weekly yeah. uh, calendar. Please credit me, at least partially, mm-hmm. when you talk to Bryce with this idea. Freak of the week calendar where you can pull in some more people. Um, but yes, I think that if Bryce was forced to do only one month for buddy games, you, you gotta put yeah. sexy Ray and sexy Sarge together. Oh, and you got all, you know, the team pride and you got June. So, uh, yeah, like, uh, you know, that's a true. Busy month, like though. you can, yeah, you can, yeah. Do, you can do something there. Okay. All right, Jenny, uh, let's, uh, let's wrap this up and we'll, uh, throw it to our interview with Debbie. Yeah. Anything else you want to say about episode six as we are uh, now in the home stretch? We're in the home stretch and I'm just looking to see how this ends because uh I don't know I, I I'm worried about team okay I love I love those guys and they're on their own now uh they lost their only allies in the derby squad so are we going to is it is a foregone conclusion that we're gonna lose okay next because we got three teams two of which are fully intact mm-hmm. probably gonna gang up on team okay just to try to get them out of the race I don't know okay but looking to, looking forward to seeing what happens next and what they're gonna eat next week okay or drink all right. Well, we'll pick it up next week. Jenny, uh, yeah. what else is coming up for you? 
Um, a few, a few other things. Uh, Rob, listen, we yeah. covered House of Villains yes. with Chappelle last week, the premiere, and you in in kind of incited a little bit of a, a storm where people, I think, thought that you were saying either it's buddy games or House of Villains, one or the I other. I never said and that. I never said I know, that. I know you never said that, but I think people took it that way. And so some people were like, drop buddy if you have to pick drop buddy games and, and cover house of villains yeah. and say well, we don't this have is to not do the that. good son yeah but rob is a very very busy man and i mean so is Chappelle. and i mean i technically am too i do i do do other things besides not a man this. um i am not a busy man no. no um but i am a busy person and but i we have to cover House of Villains. Yeah. It needs to happen. Yeah, so, there, there was some question of, uh, should, is this just a one-off to talk about House of Villains or should we have weekly coverage of it on the network? And uh, while I am going to tap out of House of Villains, you and Chappelle will continue on here in the yeah. Hit or Quit podcast feed with That's coverage right. of House of Villains. So I very much looking, uh, I'm looking forward to watching episode two and then uh, listening to you and Chappelle talk about it the rest of the way. We will miss you, Rob. And if any week you feel yeah, maybe I'll pop like back in. I you got try to it, keep up with it. You got yeah. time for us um, and the villains, uh, you just let us know. So keep an eye on the hit or quit feed for that coming to you probably sometime in the next 24 ish hours. I don't know. Um, Chappelle and I are looking to do that soon. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing how that plays out. And I am also um, starting coverage with Kirsten McKinnis on the Hot Dummies on Islands feed of f boy island season three um so that just premiered earlier this week so that should be coming out soon uh so follow the hot dummies on islands feed for that and anything else i will tweet at jenny autumn and yeah that's that's pretty much all i got going on but it's exciting times okay all right yeah. stay Happy tuned birthday, everybody Rob. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, stay <laughs> tuned, everybody, for our interview with Debbie. It's a fun one. We'll be back yes. next week to talk about uh, Buddy Games uh, Episode 7 with you. Uh, so uh, we will be right back with Debbie after this. Hey, everybody. What's going on? Rob Sestronino back here with some special coverage here covering the new CBS hit reality series, a Buddy Games, airing Thursday night. Back with me, my hit or quit podcast host, Jenny Autumn. Jenny, how are you? I'm excellent. I'm very excited. Are you ready? You know, I am I am ready. I you know, Buddy Games has been a surprise delight in our life. And, you know, there are people that have been largely responsible for the delight that we've had thus far. So I'm very excited that we get a little bit more of that today here. Yes, and I'm really glad that we have a chance today to speak to one of the stars from Buddy Games Gone Too Soon, in my opinion. Uh, Devin A. Shea is with us from the Pageant Queens. Uh, Devin, how are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> Great. Thank you for making some time with us to talk about your experience on Buddy Games. Uh, that, that episode, ultimately, where you went home from Buddy Games, I said, and I tweeted this out, that this is one of the best reality TV episodes of 2023. And I don't know if who makes a list of this, but that should be right up there. Right up there. No yeah, lies were told. Um, <laughs> it was it was a little it was a little challenging. So I'm sure it was good TV. It was great TV. And so uh, how how are you doing after all of uh the the drama from uh the buddy games? Well, it's really been a whole gamut because, you know, we filmed this last December and uh, we're in a chat group with all of the the members and there's obviously tension still between some of us, um, but we've kind of gone through. You have uh, one group chat for 24 people? 24 people. Oh one my God. Chat. That would be How my nightmare, Jenny. <laughs> yeah, that's they, a lot. They talk every single day. I'm especially on Thursdays. Yeah. <laughs> especially on Thursdays. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, so, all right. So everybody's, and you're still in the group chat. They didn't kick you out of the group chat. I'm in the group chat, but I have removed myself 
from participating. We'll just okay, say. okay. And there's probably, there's probably uh, side group. Yeah, chats there's probably other all, group yeah. chats oh, that you're not there's, in, Debbie. There's yeah, hundred percent side group chats. Yeah, there, <laughs> there's always there side a, chats. <laughs> there was a, a seven person group chat between Derby and Pageant Queens. So okay, the two teams were there, and one person was missing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, could you just talk a little bit? Okay, so uh, we know how it ended, but what about overall? How was the experience going on to Buddy Games? Oh, it was so much fun. You know, you don't get to have these kind of experiences like ever when you just go and play games and you get to be recorded doing it and do stupid things. Um, and the best part was really meeting everybody. Um, I don't think that they expected that whenever they brought all the teams together. I think they were hoping that there would be, you know, you have the the rough derby girls with the prissy uh, pageant queens and they were probably hoping that there was some friction uh, they had, you know, the Cowboys and the the Pride and maybe some friction. Uh, the two cities duking it out, you know, uh, but there was none of that. Everybody was just so excited to be there. In fact, I think that everybody, it's a consensus that everybody actually wish, wished that it was really summer camp and we were just there. Mm -hmm. Play games, no elimination, no cameras, just go there and have fun with our friends. And I think that's really where uh, things kind of changed from what they thought it was going to be. Yeah. Well, that's why it was so interesting how everything unfolded with you and the rest of your team, because I think that they probably expected there would be more friction between the teams themselves, like you said. Um, and instead, some of the greatest sources of fiction or friction were within teams. Um, so I, I'd love to just hear a little bit more how that unfolded. Yeah. How much time do you have? <laughs> um, so, so it really it began because um, of how we were cast. Uh, you know, Yolanda sent a group chat to me and this other uh, queen uh, that we've been actually friends with for a while. And we were pretty close and said, Hey, hear me out. I got this idea. Um, they're looking for, you know, friend groups. Why don't we bring together a pageant team of like Maryland queens? Because we were all former Maryland queens. And so we had a group. And for this reason or that, they couldn't make it. They didn't have like time off work, time away from their family, et cetera. They didn't meet the criteria. So at this point, because now that we've already started the, the ball and we got this excited idea, we really want to do this. I started kind of piecemealing people that I knew that both of us knew, but we weren't really friends. And that's really why we fell apart because we didn't have that dynamic that the other teams had. And I'm sure it's pretty obvious. Can you just tell us a little bit about like, uh, what did, when you all went out there, like what did you, they tell you Buddy Games was going to be? Had you seen the movie uh, that uh, that Josh had made? I had seen the movie, the other girls in the team, because, you know, we started this group chat because now we're now we're moving forward. We're like, you know, Fantastic Four, Fantastic Five. We we were talking every day. And when we were chatting, uh, I found out that the other girls hadn't seen the movie. And so <laughs> whenever they did see it, they're like, oh, OK, this is a little different than what mm -hmm. I expected. Probably wasn't there like, you know, uh, usual genre of movies. <laughs> I, I do kind of watch that like hokey stuff. So. I knew right off the bat, this is going to be ridiculous. And you watched Buddy Games 1 and 2? I actually just watched two, probably like oh. two weeks ago with my parents. <laughs> Were you able to follow the plot just jumping into the second one? Uh, yes, I'm not going to lie. It was late at night. I fell asleep towards the very end. <laughs> Not because, but uh, Josh, really I hope good. you're not listening. Please, <laughs> it was actually it was actually a really good movie. The um, you know, I know that it uh, was it was a quite different from the first one. Yeah, because you know they it wasn't it was just it was it was fun. I think the second one was actually kind of more fun. Okay. We're going to recap been, it. Maybe uh, prepared for the meaner Colada, maybe mm. maybe based on the movie. You know, I, you know, some people didn't really know. And, and I, it's funny to see the reactions on Twitter when people are like, oh, what's in that? And then they're like, oh, actually, I think I was watching your guys' recap of it. And they're like, <laughs> what's he making on this? And then people are telling you and they're like, oh, oh. No. It went in a different direction. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it went you, in a different direction. Yeah, so they, uh, we would love to know a little bit more like uh because we have so many questions about like what is lodge life like yes. with everybody living at, living at the lodge yes <laughs> oh it was really good i mean it was a really fun lodge you saw that uh 
we, you know, the first curveball you got to see that we got to choose our rooms and such. And so since we came in second, we chose the second biggest room next to OK. What we didn't realize was that we shared a bathroom with them. So that was kind of like, ugh, that was not the right decision for a bunch of Chrissy girls. Um, but uh, they, you know, they had. Why, what's going on? With te team OK, they don't uh, put the toilet seat down. Oh, they were total gentlemen. If anybody <laughs> probably was uh, gross in the bathroom, it's probably us. They mm -hmm. dealt with us. Okay. Yeah, they put up with us. So they were. Should it have been better with dinner. Derby Squad? Like, should it have been like all the women sharing the bathroom? Or oh god, that would have been a nightmare. No, actually, <laughs> we. All, I always ended up using Derby's bathroom. I always would go over there because I just liked it. it. Was away from everything else. So yeah. I liked their bathroom better. <laughs> but was it hard to live in the house with everybody? Not so much, not for me, because, you know, I've been in the army for, you know, over 20 years and I'm used to a little bit of I chaos. didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't talk about it too much on the show because um, I'm still actually in, but um, I'm used to a lot of people being in an area. So it wasn't the, the space and people wasn't an issue. The issue for me is I don't do really well with chaos. I'm a very structured, organized. People don't talk over each other. That was not happening. That like, would be bad right on a podcast. We're playing. I know, right? We were right at the I beginning am. playing games and, you know, everybody's just hollering. And I was like, this isn't my cup of tea. So I'd probably, I went to bed early a lot of times, but that's because I'd also get up in the mornings and clean the house. I'd get up and straighten oh. up, sweep the floors, um, clean the kitchen area. We did have like a rolling um, schedule for uh, which team had like dish duty and such. So I didn't like do the dishes per se. I would just do the, I'd set the placements, clean it, wipe the tables off and keep the uh, living room. What clean. would happen if a team didn't do the dishes when they were supposed to, they get a curveball? We didn't have that Unofficial. power, but no, oh. everybody was so <laughs> polite and you know, it was just teamwork. Like you didn't have, you didn't have the friction so much. I mean, I know that there were some people that probably were annoyed by the slobs in the house as they would say, but Overall, we were really copacetic together, you know? Do you think that anything had, any of that had to do with the fact that there were so many parents on the cast? And so, you know, coming from an environment where they're like caretaking and responsible for a lot of stuff already, and then they're being all put into a house together. It's like, they're already kind of used to being responsible. So if anything, this was like taking a load off. You know, I don't know if it's about being the parents, maybe, but I think it's about our age. You know, right. uh, if you get like the other reality shows running in their 20s, they're like, woo, partying and leaving their cups out and food bowls in their room. You know, we're somewhat civilized and mm -hmm. uh, maybe not all the way, but, you know, we we had a maturity about us that we hopefully keep our houses clean. So we wanted to keep our living area clean. Okay. Were there any parties though? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Every I night. Wish showed more of that. Yeah. You know, I know. We, had, we, needed we had a party and then, show. and then Josh showed up and he's like, okay, enough of the Miller light. You have to drink something gross now. I wanted to see a little bit more of the fun. <laughs> I think, I think you're going to get to see some backstage partying and getting down in um, episode six. Okay. Ooh. All right. So, Debbie, I thought that you were such a natural for reality TV and for, you know, bringing uh, some drama that we love to see on the show. Do, are, are you a fan of these reality shows? You know, I've always I've always watched the, I used to watch the challenge uh, in like the early 2000s. Oh. Um, I used to watch the challenge. I always Would you do the challenge USA? I would love to. I don't know if I'm too old, but I'd love to. No, I, I think know. you're, 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 you're probably younger than like Johnny Bananas. Yeah. Well, yeah. He's, he's doing all sorts of stuff. For this. He's yeah. trained and conditioned. You I gotta start know. somewhere, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have the mental fortitude. You saw me crying with my own friends. I can't imagine how, you know, that, everybody though. jumping up That's on what they me, want. So. Yeah. Well, I think you'd be incredible on the challenge. I think we, well, we've, we've been manifesting that, haven't we, Rob? Yeah, we think that we need to. Twitter has been, so <laughs> I mean, we're, we'll we're there. see what happens. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that works, but they, they should give you a call. They're crazy if they don't, Debbie. Call me. <laughs> yes. Okay, so you watched the challenge. And were you I trying to bring any of that to, like, are there any are there any challenge people that you really relate to? Well, so, oh, goodness, you know, I... I watched the old school. So, and you know, like Wes actually lives here in Kansas City with me. Oh, Nehemiah does. So, like, we're, I we're friends Nehemiah now. Huh? 
Well, we're friends with Wes now. Yes, he's cool. He's cool. I haven't talked to him. Um, I saw him like when I lived here before. So I saw him out and about once. Uh, I watched him when he was on the real world. So I watched him from mm -hmm. inception. Um, so I watched the old school. I didn't know a lot of these newer players. You know, I kind of took a big reality TV break because just life is busy. I actually just got into Big Brother probably like three seasons ago because my mom watches okay. every reality show under the sun. And so she got my son watching it with her. So now me and my son, that's our guilty pleasure is Big Brother. But I did, don't watch anything else. Did but you Yolanda, like when Josh Dumel came to Big Brother this summer? Yes. Um, I I think that I wish that he would have done more. I think that the challenge was, uh, I don't know. It was just, it's kind of hokey. And I think that he could have done more. They could have, they could have used him more. Um, he was just there with the bugle. Like yeah. he didn't really. I know. Yeah. Like he, he's so fun and funny. He has so much more off to offer than what they let him do. I think. Do you have the cardboard cutout from Big <laughs> I Brother? Don't, but yeah. I would, I would, I'd put it up in my living room for a little bit. Put like a lay on it or something. Decorate you it. Could for dress holidays. him up for holidays. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's so. I'm, fun. I'm with you. He's, I want. <laughs> I think we have a cool host. Yeah, I was going to say, how much is Josh there? Because um, obviously, like, you know, all of the interactions we see, like, but do you get do you get time with Josh like outside of all of the stuff that you're filming when he's like starting the challenges and stuff? If I recall, I really only remember seeing him challenge days, but you see a lot of them. I mean, and he wants to be there and, you know, he's. He's more excited about this than I think we are because mm -hmm. this is his baby, you know, like yeah. coming into existence. So he was so fun. He talked to all of us, make jokes. Um, you know, he was a little misty eyed at the first episode. Like he's he's I don't think that like I think he's too big for, you know, this type of thing, like all the time. But I think that it's cool that he comes down to, you know, reality TV land to give us, you know, a little taste of his his realness, you know, mm -hmm. the real Josh. So Debbie, we love the strategy on these shows. And it seemed like that you and Andrew were at the center of that. Uh, how, how did that come to be? You know, I, I'm, I'm going to disappoint you for a second because okay. I, I am not as strategic as everybody thinks. It, I had two conversations. I had one that you guys saw on TV with Andrew. And I had one with Melissa and Shu in the bathroom talking about like, hey, it'd be really cool to see the girls like make it to the end. Um, I love Andrew. He was my favorite person in the house. He's my best friend in the house. Um, but I was not like that strategic. In fact, that's not even what the fight that we had was about. Um, Yolanda and Andrew actually were like the big survivor fans. They like know, yeah. love, eat, breathe, sleep this. So Yolanda said that she will watch repeats of this while she's doing work and such. So she's like, she knows. And, and her and I were initially talking, you know, Hey, we got to get in good with these teams. Not that we weren't, you know, but you just want to make sure. And so Yolanda was doing a lot more, you know, chatting with me about this stuff initially. Um, but whenever it became so apparent to the other two girls, I put a, you know, squash to it because I wasn't trying to cause any more waves. So did she have a relationship with Andrew as well? Because they really only showed that you and Andrew yeah. seemed to have yes. that you were kind of the connector to Team Pride. I probably had the bigger one, definitely. Because like I said, I, I I I loved, I immediately flocked to Andrew. He was like my kind of person. I was, I'd probably follow him into doing something really stupid, honestly, on the show. Like I just loved him and I still do. Um, he just is so smart. He has this presence. He, he, he makes you want to follow him. Like he's smart. He's, he's quick. And so I was drinking what he was, I was drinking his Kool-Aid. Yeah. Okay. He probably could have told me anything. I'd be like, yeah, that's a good idea. I, so, yeah. As long as it was Kool-Aid and not a meaner colada. I know he would have been like, here, you need to drink too, Debbie. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Give them to me. Yeah. For our teams. <laughs> right. So you said that uh, the issue with the other pageant queens wasn't even about that. What what was it about? It was actually more ugly and more personal. So um, it, it, I'll, uh -oh. I'll tell you where I think some things started. And it really was, it's it's a Debbieism. I'm I don't eat meat. And so sometimes I'm a little brash with some of my uh, my quips. Like I I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't eat dead animals. And I do that on purpose to offend people. Um, but Debbie. right. I, I, I know. I know. I guess. <laughs> so I I because I could dish it out. I'm like, you know, if you if you can take it, then that's fine. I'm not going to like hate you for it. But I will say my quips. 
um, we were doing our initial like interview and such, and they're planning a game where they're like, okay, who's most likely to, you know, eat, eat things in a challenge. Who's most likely to do this. And there was one, they were like, who's most likely to stop in the middle of the road and pet an animal. And I raised my hand and Lourdes and Yolanda both pointed at me and Lauren was like, well, me guys. And I turn around, I said, but you eat them. So that was probably where some got of off on the wrong the foot friction started with that one. Um, then it turned into, uh, you know, uh, it was right when they were about to do the second Losers Last Stand. And Yolanda and I were talking, we were hearing chatter about, oh, because they're about to do that run around the lake. And, you know, Lauren's super fit and like works out every morning. And so Yolanda and I were talking about maybe she's intimidating people. They might be apt to uh, sabotage us knowing how fit we are. Oh, she is she's the she's the fit girl um mm -hmm. and so i went to go talk to her like hey maybe you work out a little earlier before you know some of these pe people get up and that again offended her i think and so we had that you you see on camera we had the the team meeting and i'm just kind of sitting there listening because uh it's it's like starting to be debbie heavy <laughs> and um so your lorda says well you're not as well perceived in the house as you think that you are and Lauren goes, yeah, you're not well perceived in the house. And so like, they obviously have had a conversation the, about how me. did you become prom queen then? Andrew, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like I said, everybody drinks his Kool-Aid, you know? Um, so apparently I was not, there was people that were talking about me. I think I know who it was and that's fine. Bygones. Um, Somebody from one of the other teams. Yes. Yes. Not one I of the pageant queens. No, it was not. It was, it was, it was, but I asked Lourdes. I was asked, it I was Sarge? Like, well, no, I love Sarge. Sarge was Mike. it Anthony? No. Are you gonna, you're gonna guess all 20, 20 of them, or do you want me to tell you? <laughs> yeah, just go through the list, Rob. <laughs> was it was it Elise? No, but she would tell you if she was talking crap yeah. on you. Yeah, I love her too yeah. so much. Okay. It was. Right. I think it was. A, I think it was Derby Girls. Okay. But I was gonna I say it was a Derby. This. Yeah. And so I'd ask Lourdes, you know. Um, what was, you know, what was said? So maybe I can fix this, but she wouldn't tell me what was said or who said it. So I was like this little, you know, time bomb that was just like waiting. And so now I'm sitting here. I'm like, am I not well liked? Should I just go home? You know, like getting all emo and blah, blah, blah. So that kind of started the things. Then we were in the kitchen one time and, uh, they said she said some really ugly things that I probably shouldn't repeat on here. And so I didn't really want to talk to the group for a little bit. And so who um, just, just, who is this? This was uh, one of the Derby girls. No, this is my team. My team, okay, my, my team, team decided okay, right. to do the dishes for another team since they were doing interviews. And she yes. they thought it'd be nice to like, do the interview. And I was like, I was out talking to other people. I, I came in. I'm like, I don't really want to do the dishes. Like I, I get up and clean the house every morning. Like mm -hmm. I, so I watched them do the dishes. That probably didn't help my case any either. <laughs> wow. Jenny, did you have any idea that like uh, these chores These're at chores. the Buddy Games house? <laughs> we have not been told about how much the chores ended up impacting This should things. be part of the show. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We want more lodge life. If the dishes are causing problems, I would like to know about it. Yeah. I, like I said, I don't we think need live dishes. feeds. Yeah. I think there was, I think there was just some, some built up frustration that I think was started outside of the house and it came into the house. Yeah. So one thing yeah. I'm curious about was, and it seemed that none of the teams going into um, the show realized the, the twist that gets revealed in the first episode that if you lose in Loser's Last Stand, you have to basically vote out one of your own team members. Do you feel like that actually ended up playing any part in how that division between you and the rest of the team kind of like materialized? Like once they knew that if they were in that position that they needed to make a decision, do you feel like that that kind of started to create a little bit of uh, a division? I don't know if that really was doing it because Yolanda and I talked right off the bat and she was like, hey, I want to make sure we're on the same page. Who do you want to send home? We need to send the same person home. And, you know, I said, Lorda, she said, Lauren. And uh, that was before we went to the house. Then we're in the house and um, we had a, a conversation right before the second loser's last stand. And she's like, are you still feeling the same person? I was like, yeah. 
So we were on board that we were going to be the United Front and then, you know, unfortunately just send one of those home. That's where my meltdown happened uh, because I knew that the tides had changed because things, you know, like I was slowly being pushed out of the group. Some of it my doing, some of it not, you know. So mm -hmm. I don't think that the stress of that caused it. I think because she was getting closer to them and I was becoming isolated that I, I by default put myself out, you know? Don't you think it would be a great twist if you could have switched teams and stayed in the house? Well, I'll tell you, you know, because the pageant Queens and I were not friends right now. Um, and so I have been adopted by Philly. So oh, team Philly. Yes, oh. team Philly. Okay. Okay. They've, they've, they've allowed me to come into, you know, we're on like a little group chat and they're so wonderful. I absolutely love them. Did they kick Mike out and they replaced Mike no, with you? Mike, <laughs> Mike, Mike is a ride or die. I just get to, because okay, so I've, I've gotten to meet like Freddie's wife, Erica, also another Erica, you know, my first name is Erica. So we joke that we're the Erica's she's lovely as well. Um, they're all just great people and I love their friendship and it's just so big and welcoming. They welcome anybody. They would welcome any yeah. of the cast into their team. So I'm not, they would have taken you if you could have, yeah, I'm not special, <laughs> but I I'll just be like, I'm a de facto Philly member now. Yeah. Okay. Um, did you get to the bottom of, uh, the hall pass story with team Philly? <laughs> well, I Zach think Efron. It, it, played out on air i don't i anthony tells you exactly why he that's his hall pass he would does he, he understand would take, what a hall pass is though <laughs> he he would take zach efron to a hotel room and eat some nuggies and call it a Just day that though and play sports he said <laughs> yeah. Me, yeah yeah they might play sports, we, we know debbie like, would not nuggies. take zach efron to a hotel room and eat some nuggies under <laughs> any circumstances he is pretty. no way no way probably a little young for my taste but yeah <laughs> and no nuggies yeah <laughs> maybe a noogie <laughs> <laughs> um is i'm there... gonna be the one giving the noogie <laughs> debbie is there is there any hope for reconciliation with you in the pageant queens how, how, well, how, do, how, do, how do we fix this so you know it was around new year's eve and yolanda and i kind of started talking we we're bridging that the the biggest you know we we're talking gingerly, delicately, and because, you know, we were really good friends going into this. Uh, the other two, not so much. I, I don't hold grudges. I purposely held a grudge because I'm like, I felt, you know, maybe victimizing myself that they took something from me that I it was so important. I really wanted to be there so bad. And I felt, you know, I blamed them for that. Um, so I kept this, I, I kept this grudge. Um, as we got closer to, you know, the cast release and such, we all decided to, you know, follow each other once we were able to, and we were tagging each other. And so the four of us were doing the job, you know, we, we all refriended each other and started tagging each other during all of the stuff. Um, we got to do that until episode three and then episode four, Yolanda blocked me again. And honestly, you know, people, people are trolls. Uh, people are saying a lot of bad stuff and, uh, like fans fans and haters yeah, yeah I, I i mean i i've seen you know i've seen majority fans but i've seen the ugly ones for me but yolanda's gotten some it's just not cool some of the things that people are saying to her and she just didn't want to deal with it anymore mm -hmm. so she just blocked me um i did text her yesterday because it was like i just screenshot of our like audition uh zoom sending yeah. uh, and such and i was like oh look what happened a year ago today and she's like worst decision ever <laughs> So, um... <laughs> but, but I don't understand. So, okay. So I, I, I totally understand blocking, uh, the haters and there shouldn't be any of that, especially around buddy games, which is supposed yeah. to be that's about buddies. Game fun, of yeah. Fun, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's not in the spirit of buddy games people. Uh, but why did she block you? She's, I mean, people are saying that she's a bad person for how she treated me. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, she's just, she's over it, I guess. Okay. Or I don't know. I mean, I, I really don't know. I mean, I couldn't tell you. I'm not going to ask her. I just did anything. Did sorry. Did anything come out in the edit that you weren't aware of? Because most of the confessionals are as a group. So like yeah. in other reality shows, sometimes people will once it airs, they'll be mad at each other because they'll see confessionals where they talked mm -hmm. about each other. But that didn't mm -hmm. really happen with Buddy Games. So did you actually learn anything from watching the show that you weren't already aware of that brought up new feelings? 
Not for my team, no. I They took it at... So some people are saying it's kind of like a bad edit because they like made them look like bullies. Um, I... I, my only counter to that is, you know, to the cast members is like, I, I told you that I was isolated for three days. I couldn't, you know, I didn't talk to people because everything it was just, it was a miserable three days. Like I went up, I asked Lauren as we were walking up to the soccer game, if, you know, they were going to throw the competition to get rid of me, you know, I mean, obviously I knew that, like things were not good. Things were not good. It wasn't just an, all of a sudden you guys turned on me, you know, like things were growing. Um, I obviously did you feel like it was a throw that they did throw the competition to get rid of you? No, Lourdes was blocking them balls as well as she could. Yeah. Um, we just we just didn't have a strategy. Um, Yolanda and Team Philly say, was uh, this was Freddie their finest was, hour. Yeah, Freddie, Freddie was on it. Freddie. I did not <laughs> want to go against Freddie, you know, I and I I even said that probably in an OTF prior to that competition. I was like, fast, Freddie, you don't want to mess with that dude. Mm -hmm. And here we go. Yeah. There I was at the end. I was, I was, I was at the end trying. I was like, kick me the ball, Lauren. I'll go down there. Cause you know, like I'm the run, I can keep running and such. I may not be able to kick the ball well, but I can run down there. And I was trying to get to the goal and psh, Freddie knocks me over. I was like, all right, maybe not the best plan. Maybe I can't take on Freddie by myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I, I don't think that they threw it. Um, I looking back now, I'm wondering if, you know, the, the shovel thing, like the shovel thing was not, uh, we did, we're not in sync on trying to, you know, switch that ball with the shoveling, but Yolanda, I mean, she, we, we gave her a really bad slow start and she almost brought it back, you know, throwing that ball. Yeah. Uh, so she was quick. If we would have gotten that shovel faster, she would have easily killed the other two teams. Debbie, yeah, is there anything that you would have done differently if you had to do buddy games all over again? A few things, a few things. Um, I I really wish that, you know, some of the the closer friends would have gone in there. I think that it would have been, you know, a much different show. Uh, my best friend at the time, Courtney, you know, I was really hoping that she was there. Uh, I, there's some, you know, so some personalities. I probably should have shut my mouth a little bit more and not pissed off my friends by talking, but um, maybe I was too sensitive to some things you know I definitely definitely sh I tried to keep my mouth shut after the soccer game like I even said I don't think I'm the right person to ask for this but she kept pushing and and I'm susceptible to that you know and maybe I said something on this podcast that you know I should have they're like ah zip it um I don't know uh so I'm I I shouldn't have said that our strategy or the lack of strategy I know that where I was going with is that we need to be more unified if we're going to do better and losers last stand but i just word vomited so that's you know mm -hmm. same on me there that's that that's that was the coffin the nail in the coffin for me <laughs> yolanda should you know yolanda had every right to be mad at me for that look debbie this is buddy games you know uh people come to the buddy games arena this is what happens yeah, I, I, I think that some of the, you know, you're seeing a lot of the, 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 the friction and such with in regards to some people are like kind of shocked that their strategy and such, they're like, oh my God, you know, you guys are snakes for creating alliances. Um, like, well, don't tell no. Melissa. <laughs> I know, right? Um, but you see that everybody did it, you know. And so even some of the people that are calling us snakes, you know, they have they had agreements that they weren't going to sabotage. I don't know. Is that would you call that an alliance? I'm not going to sabotage you, Rob. Do we have an alliance? I don't know. I, I, yeah, I think that's an alliance. Um, but I think that's like all with it, you know. Look, it, it's also a TV show. Like, uh, people, you got to play hard. Uh, you got to, like, you know, uh, ruffle some feathers. Otherwise, it's uh, boring. Yeah, yes. I unfortunately gave a lot of uh, material. So I, mm -hmm. you know. And for that, we're grateful. we're grateful. We're yeah. grateful, <laughs> Debbie. I know. I see comments like, she's made for reality TV. I was like, I don't know if that is a compliment. I don't know if that's a compliment. <laughs> Um, I think it is, Debbie, and you should take it as <laughs> such because uh, you were you were very fun to watch. And also, I think it comes from a place of, you know, you're not trying to be, yes. uh, you know, you're, you're not you're not looking to it's not contrived or fake or anything like that. So authenticity. Uh, we, yeah, yeah, we we appreciate it, yeah. Debbie. 
I'm definitely real. That's why I'm saying I probably need to shove some of that back in the in the container a little bit if I do, you know, because that definitely uh, probably get me out. If, if I do any more shows, they'll probably get me out pretty early. So let's, uh, you know, reel it in a little bit, learn a little control with my emotions, my mouth, you know, just kind of. Uh, get a little better at this if I'm going to do any more of it. Yeah, but don't lose who you are, Debbie. Yeah. Right. And it depends uh, well, on the show, too. Like, mm -hmm. it's not yeah. necessarily a bad thing. So. Yeah. Well, yeah you save some of that on the challenge. Traitors. I'm like, or oh. uh, villain, villain squad. House I'm of like, Villains? House of Villains. I'm like, I haven't watched it, but I'm like, I don't know if I would be horrible at that because I'm not a good villain. Yeah. Um, I'm an emotional person. So, like, if, if I get picked and poked you know maybe maybe i guess i could yeah. be a villain but just by nature i'm a lover not a fighter that's why i had friends that um when they saw that the recap of you know me just going into all of the f-bombs that they're like <laughs> i've never seen you like that and it's because i don't get like that i'm normally not you know provoked to that point i'm uh so i'm hoping that you know, that's not a norm. That's not, that's not the TV Debbie that I want to give you guys. <laughs> okay. Debbie, what else are you working on outside of buddy games? I don't know. Not too much right now. I have, um, I am a pageant director. Uh, that's how I know Lourdes. She was one of my Queens, uh, in 2022. Um, and so I have a pageant coming up uh, next month in DC for DC, Virginia and Maryland. So that's kind of where a lot of my energy is going right now. Okay. Uh, any place that people can follow you, Debbie? Yeah, that you're, okay. you, that you are, you, you didn't block anybody, right? I haven't blocked it. Like I said, I'm blocked, but I, I, well, that's not true. I did block the L's, but I haven't blocked Yoli. I think she blocked me first, but um, I'm like, I'm an open book. I, I opened up my profile so people can go and say things. Mm -hmm. um, if they to do so say nice um, things people please most, <laughs> please most say nice, be nice, nice people. you know most of it has been nice uh and you know i think i thank people for the support you know and i thank them for you know tuning in and everything but all of my handles because i'm in you know i'm in uh the media business all of my handles i started like when they opened up back in like 11 12 13 so it's everything's at devany shea d-e-v-e-n-e-y-s-h-e-a okay what a story it would be if the pageant queens could reconcile after all this. What uh, that maybe when the show wouldn't, it, over. wouldn't it be a great message, Jenny, around the holidays <laughs> if mm. that we could see the pageant queens all get back together? There's some time, and you well, know, maybe once the show is done, you the guys best can all talk. part is the three of them are really close, and so you know, you have a close friendship that wasn't there before, and so uh, that's that's probably the the best part of this is that there is a close friendship. I have plenty of friends, you know, I, I obviously don't want to fight with Yolanda. I, I love her, but I'm also, there is a mistrust there between the two. Um, so maybe we'll, maybe we'll just be like an accordion or we like each other this week. We block each other next week. I don't know. Uh, the ball's really in her court. How's that? Debbie, what, what if you invite all the pageant queens for Thanksgiving? You could get the tofurkey ready to go. <laughs> Bring everybody over. Hash it out. You know, yeah. I did, I did They'll do the dishes. <laughs> Lauren and I are both Broncos fans and we're having, you know, a rough season. And I, I did message her one time, but uh, usually whenever I message the group, uh, I just get a puke emoji. So I just kind of. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, it sounds like it's you made. Well, maybe are you messaging about the Broncos? Maybe that's a reaction. Yeah, that to, like, uh, did you see they they put up seventy Fair. points against us? Yeah, no, no hating on the Broncos. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. All right. You can hate on Tabby, but don't. Well, hate you've on the made lots of friends. <laughs> It, it sounds like you've made lots of friends otherwise. So, you mm -hmm. know, absolutely. Like, I was just in Chicago yeah. last week. Those, uh, that team right there, you know, I hope they win. Okay. I, I hope, I hope pride wins. I hope Philly wins. I hope they, I hope they all win. I love them. They're just all fantastic people and everybody should 
we're all so lucky that we got a chance to meet. I thank CBS for casting them. They did a really, really great job. Okay. With the people that they brought yeah. on the show. All right. Well, Debbie, thank you for making some time to talk with us about uh, Buddy Games. Uh, Jenny, you and I will pick it up uh, with uh, the next Buddy Games episode uh, this right. Thursday night as we are in the home stretch of the Buddy Games uh, season. You could hear all of it. our Buddy Games podcasts in our Hit or Quit podcast feed, uh, which you can go to at robiswebsite.com slash hit or quit feed or go to subscribe to any of our podcasts at robiswebsite.com slash subscribe. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.